In the previous lecture, you did host preparation. In this lecture, let's look at some target preparation. Let's explore about some of the board components. We explored about this board in our previous course, isn't it? But I will briefly explain about the board. The board is um, beagle bone black, and the heart of this board is an SOC from Texas Instruments. This SOC is from Sitara family of SOCs. Uh, produced by Texas Instruments. The exact part number is AM2258BZ something. And this SOC is based on ARM Cortex A8 processor, which is of ARM V7 architecture of ARM. And apart from this SOC, this has onboard EMMC, that is a EMMC memory. And uh, it has got micro SD card slot where you can connect the micro SD card. It has got USB host, HDMI interface, it has got Ethernet, and so many other things. You can boot um, this board through various interfaces. You can boot the Linux kernel through uh, EMMC or SD card, USB, Ethernet, SPI. So, various options are available. This board comes with pre-installed OS, the Debian OS on EMMC. And by default, this board boots via EMMC. That is embedded MMC. That's why when you give power to this board, uh, the Debian OS which is stored in the EMMC runs. In this course, we will not be touching the EMMC memory of the board. Instead, we are going to uh, install the Debian root path system and our boot images on the SD card and we boot via the SD card so your EMMC files will not get affected. Let's move forward. First let's learn how you can supply power to this board. Very simple you just need a mini USB cable. Uh, this mini USB cable actually comes with the board so if it doesn't come with the board then you may have to buy one and this end actually goes to the PC and this end goes to the board. You have to connect this cable to the mini USB port which you can find at the Ethernet slot side. That's how you power the board. And also you would need one more cable that is serial debug cable. This is a very useful cable. This cable helps you to Establish the connection between the computer and the target that is the BeagleBone Black board. When Linux boots on the hardware, it actually emits the early boot messages on the serial pins. So the serial pins are exposed on the board. These are the BeagleBone's serial port pins. By using this cable, we can get those debug messages on our computer. Instead of this cable, uh, you can also uh, go for dongles, USB to TTL serial converter dongles. I would not suggest uh, buying these dongles because this would make your setup more messy because it doesn't come with a cable, isn't it? You have to arrange for the cables like uh, jumper wires and all. That would make your setup more messy. That's why go for USB to TTL serial converter cable instead. This is a very low cost cable. You can get it for three to four dollars. Let's learn how to connect this cable to the board. Actually, you have to do a cross connection. That means TX must go to the RX and RX should go to the TX. Here, you actually take the ground pin of the cable. The ground pin is black color. The ground pin of the USB to serial cable must be connected to the ground pin of the Beagle Bones J1 header. This is a J1 header. That is pin 1. And the TXD pin of the cable must be connected to the RXD of the Beagle Bones J1 header that is pin 4 and RXD of the cable must be connected to the TXD pin 
of the beagle bones j1 header that is pin 5 you have to make use of three connections ground txt and rxt that's it very important point tx must go to the rx and rx must go to the tx let's explore about the boot sequence of bbb there are different boot sequences are possible and you can alter the boot sequence to alter the boot sequence there is a boot button on the board and the boot button is s2 if you don't press the boot button and if you just give the power to the board then this boot sequence will be followed that means the hardware will first try to boot from the onboard emmc that is embedded mmc so if it doesn't find any valid partition then it would check the next boot source that is the sd card if it doesn't find any valid boot images over there then it would go to uart0 and then it would try to boot from usb0 that's the default boot sequence if you don't press the boot button as i said already the board already comes with pre-installed debian os on the emmc that's the reason whenever you give power to the board the board boots from the emmc you need not to press anything just to give the power to the board it boots but in our case we don't want to boot from the emmc remember that we want to boot from sd card that's why we have to follow this boot sequence you have to press the boot button during power up whenever you give power to the board the boot button must be pressed in that case the first boot source becomes spy which would be invalid in our case that's why the board tries to boot from mmc0 which is nothing but micro sd slot we have to keep valid partition and valid boot images on the sd card so that the board can boot from the micro sd card in our case this would be the boot sequence but you need not to keep pressing the boot button s2 again and again during power up that is one uh, hack which i will cover in later lectures that we can make our board boots from the micro sd card whenever we give power to the board that will explore later actually the boot button s2 affects a register called sysboot sysboot is actually a register or it is a bit field of a control register of the soc a pressing or not pressing of s2 button actually affects the contents of the sysboot that's what uh, makes the board to select between different uh, boot sequences here is a s2 button this is a boot button just check your board near the micro sd card slot you see one uh, button that is boot button named as s2 and you also see uh, two more buttons one is power button and another one is reset button let's understand what are the use case of this power button reset button and boot button let's first understand what exactly is the use case of power button by press and holding this button for 10 to 20 seconds you can power down the board once the board is powered if you want to power it down then you need not to remove the usb cable which is connected to the computer you can just do a long press on this power button about 10 to 20 seconds so the board will go into the power down mode once you power down the board gently press this button one time again your board will again power up the use case is instead of removing and connecting power sources to your board again and again you can use this button to power down and power up that's the use case next one is reset button pressing this button resets the board but note that the boot sequence is not affected by the reset action why because the reset action will not affect the sysboot bits 
Do you see a sys boot bits here? This is not affected by the reset. That's the reason the boot sequence will remain same. After that boot button, you can use this button to change the boot sequence during power up of the boot. In this course, I don't think we'll be using a power button more frequently. We may use it one or two times, not more than that. Most of the time, we'll be just resetting the boot. We'll not be uh, using boot button more frequently as well. For some initial setup, we'll be using boot button and power button. And after that, uh, you need not to use that button. I will guide you how to uh, use these buttons, no problem. Let's move forward. So, in summary, our board has got uh, uh, two important interfaces. The SOC can boot from the embedded MMC, which is of 4 gigabytes, or our SOC can boot from external interface, such as micro SD card connector. The micro SD card connector is called as MMC0 interface, and the onboard EMMC is called as MMC1 interface. As I said before, we will not be booting from MMC1 interface. We will be booting from the MMC0 interface, that is the micro SD card. In the next lecture, I will cover booting from micro SD card interface. And I will see you in the next lecture.